So all you basically have to do is disconnect and then, well, show the login screen again. Technically. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think that's really true. Oh, I tried it. I think, yeah, but you didn't test everything. No, I couldn't because it was showing the login screen all the time, but I could hear, hear myself in the background loading and doing stuff and walking around. <laughs> they can <sighs> see stuff because, well, the login screen. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd say that's a fairly it. serious problem. Yeah, well, <laughs> if I if I made the login screen disappear somehow, I could have probably used the viewer as it is supposed to be used, right? So... I think there are a great many more important problems to solve in Second Life than being able to <laughs> log in again without quitting the viewer and restarting it. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, let's get ourselves together a little bit. We dispense with the usual rundown of the viewer pipeline. Um, we've got, let's see. Uh, two project viewers in flight at the moment, of course, 64-bit. We're going to talk about that quite a bit here. Uh, 360 snapshot is out there, but is on hold pending work that's needed on this 64-bit. We will um, get back to that and, um, and do more on it, but don't expect updates on it anytime soon. Um, there's the maintenance RC viewer is uh out there there's uh we have we have another one work work well we have two more branches we're working on one that has um rendering only fixes and one that has all the other fixes and new I changes hope that we're it doing. does include the rigged alpha thing that uh, has been accepted years ago i i don't I don't know I what the rigged alpha thing refers to, so I don't know. I, I can look it up for you. Um, okay. It, it's, bas it's basically um, that rigged alpha um, masked surfaces cast solid shadows. So basically the uh, alpha part I don't, ignored. I don't think so, but if you'll find me a reference, we can, we can try to get that's yeah, the sort of thing that branch is for. So we can try to get that folded in. Uh, mm -hmm. Or at least test it, and then and then fold it. In. Um, no, I, I don't I don't think it's there. But uh, so let's see. Um, yeah, it's like we have we have all of those in flight. That's pretty much the the current queue. Uh, I want to talk about today. I'm going to want to talk about where we are with 64-bit. What remains to be done before it goes to release candidate status. Uh, I, I will not, of course, speculate on when any of those events will occur because I try not to do that. Yeah. Um, thank you, Naren. Uh, oh, it's already three years ago. Oh. Oh, well, uh, yeah, there is an internal issue for that. I was off a little. Thanks. Um, Fixing that would be great. Okay, we can, Grumpity will rummage and see what, what has happened with that internally. Um, so we're going we're gonna to talk about the 64-bit and what we plan to do there um, before we go to RC. And then, after having talked about the general issue of the 64-bit viewer, I want to spend some time talking about what our strategy, our development strategy for the Linux viewer is going forward. Um, and maybe get it a little less stuck than it has been. So, uh, in, is there anything else that people want to make sure we discuss before we um, get into that agenda that I've got? Well, I, um, I have two things on my list that I wanted to bring up for us. Um, okay, I one is, kind of rather do other things before the, the big stuff. I've got. Okay, all right, so one is, uh, Jessica Lyon has in, instructed me, as a matter of fact, she twisted my arm and threatened me to bring up the uh, music volume issue again. 
Uh, because that's our mission for the right. year. Uh, okay. uh, right. Uh, we have, we have, we have, uh, right. You're looking at that? It, that's it, it, has, for me. It, it has been, it has been brought up. We acknowledge that it's it not like Jessica up. doesn't have my number. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. really? That's probably what Oz asked me for. Oz, do you remember me asking about what the difference is between the alpha toggles and alpha um, layers? <laughs> you asked me about that, and I told you that the difference is that the um, toggles disable shadows while the alpha layers don't. So, Grumpity, my problem is Jess knows where I live in real life, and she can get to me quickly enough that she could physically hurt me. <laughs> I, I, I sort of gotta do right. that. We, we, have, we, it has been duly noted, and um, okay, good. We will, so, if she watches the video, she'll give it know. the attention it it is possible to give it. You're right, Grumpy. The other one is um, voice. Um, voice issues are insane at the moment. Uh, Could you be more specific about what voice uh, is I, 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 I can be insane. Okay, voice is breaking up or disconnecting for people. Um, uh, sometimes simply toggling it works. Sometimes um, you have to relog. Other times, I've, I actually the other day had to uh, go to Voice Echo Canyon, disable voice, uh, relog there, re-enable voice in order to get voice back. So it's a disconnection issue, and the garbling word, all of a sudden everybody starts sounding like they're breaking up. Those are the two okay. big ones. Um, that's the sort of thing that is almost certainly a Vivox end issue, but mm -hmm. we'll raise it with them. Um, I think I have a meeting yeah. with them next week. Okay, you I did was mention... currently looking into various voice issues and trying to do some testing to figure out what's going on. Yeah, um, you... We have a slew of support cases coming in as well, and we've all experienced it in meetings. Um, yeah, we're I mean, just I, trying I to did kind of narrow in. down what the problem is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, Grumpy, Grumpy, this does. This seems to be something that it seems to be occurring at a regular time frame because. When I go to discussions, voice will either break up or completely drop out, and it'll be right about four o'clock second lifetime, or close to five second lifetime when it's done. And it's done at the, every time it's dropped out for me, it's been right in that time frame. Hmm. See, for me, it's so been a totally know. random thing, and one person will lose voice on a region where other people don't. Uh, yeah, we've, just, we, we've had yeah. we've had some issues ourselves in some of our own meetings. In, in, ironically, in fact, the last time I met with Vivox, uh, we had a very mysterious set of uh, connection issues where some of the people in the room uh, ended up connected to one voice channel, one nearby voice channel, and some people ended up connected to another one. So everybody saw themselves as having a voice dot, and you could talk to some subset of the people in the room, but the other people didn't hear you. Yeah. So um, it, it was, that was pretty odd, and in fact, uh, our our uh, VivVox rep was uh, that would be really nice perplexed by it. Went, <laughs> well, we have it. It's called group chat and uh, group voice calls and no, conference calls. No, I, 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 mean, I actually mean uh, <laughs> in nearby chat. That would be a great feature yeah. to have. Well, it it's not the way that particular feature is supposed to work. So, um, yes, we are aware that it's a little bit, because we don't have, have easy ways now to, um, to quantify the frequency of problems like that, um, we only have anecdotal reports. Um, anecdotal reports kind of sort of work, but you know, uh, what what can be true is that some small set of regions are having a a big problem, and people who frequently uh, spend most of you know spend most of their time in those regions will say the entire grid is all screwed up, and in fact, the rest of the grid might be completely fine. Um, so, what we'd really like to have is 
is something that more uh, specifically reports from as many viewers as possible what's what the frequency of connection problems is across the grid as a whole. And in fact, I've written some of that check, some of those checks and ways to report them. Uh, and I haven't quite finished that, and it's all in the next voice viewer. Okay. Um, would it be helpful if we were to file a juror with when and where it happened to allow you to access logs or no? Uh, if you were to put it all into a single JIRA that you... Yeah, yeah. Could uh, that's, right. Yeah, not, not a new one every time it happens, but... Please. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, please okay. not be scared. We, we can't all have Whirly's productivity. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I get that one. Trust me, company. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Um... I just uh, threw not. up that picture yeah, was... um, a long time ago. It was an old thumbprint. I don't have something valid at this time, but it's small. But you can kind of see where it says there's a Vivox issue right there. Yeah, we we all get that error. Um, okay. It's it you know it's only helpful if we have that error and the exact time and location, and then we can pull up server logs and. There's only a limited amount of time we can spend on pulling out the server logs versus all the other things. So, right. but yeah, we're unfortunately, in order to get a complete picture of what happened, what we have to do is go in and get the server log. And if you think looking through viewer logs is bad, yeah, <laughs> you I, you don't have I, the right perspective. I I don't even want to think about it. Thank you very much. So, uh, so. Um, it's it's the same inscrutable format, only with much 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 more in it. Uh, but we have you know, and so obviously we don't keep those around for very long. Uh, typically, only a few days, and then they just go away. So if we get a report about a voice problem that happened four days ago, there is absolutely nothing we can do about it. it, it there's just no way to learn anything more about it. Um, I guess those logs become like multiple gigabytes every day. I, I I I don't have numbers in front of me, but yeah, I mean, they're huge. And um, okay, uh, other other non stuff that wasn't on my list. Yes. Yeah, you had the issue that you wanted to discuss. You had a storm issue that you wanted to discuss. Um. Yeah, two actually. The environment thing from last time and the projector shadow thing. Right. Uh, so, do you have the numbers in front of you by any chance? Uh, I saw that you'd that. filed. Sorry? Yeah, I, I filed one for the environment thing, but not for the shadow projector thing yet. But I can do that. Uh, oh, maybe you just sent me a an email about that. I can send you the code if you want. Here you go. <laughs> no, that's okay. I, I uh, all, all the time, just for this case, just for a situation. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's see the other one. Uh. Ah, there we go. Um, we're also having problems with our uh, help with our uh, gateway team chat as well. Okay, so uh, as far as this storm twenty one forty six, um, this is a. By the way, a, not incidentally, and I should acknowledge it whenever it happens, because it's not usually the case. This is a really good write up of what the feature is and why it's significant and uh, just plenty of context um, so that it can be understood. I don't so think it would be... are you saying that this is literally the first time I made a proper JIRA? Wow, I think it's... 
I think it's it's certainly one of your best. Um, uh, no, it's a, it's really good uh, just on a general scale, not relevant to anything you may or may not have done in the past. It's just good. Um, so uh, so thank you very much for spending the time to do that. I don't think well, I want to spend the time. This this meeting is is supposed to be focused on what we're definitely doing, what our plans are, and how they affect third party viewers. This is a great proposal, and we will definitely follow up on it, and I will follow up with you on it, um, and I need to have a discussion with our rendering folks and Grumpity uh, was, uh, like about said, how to decide to, what to do about it. But I'm probably going we, to do and try the uh, local part myself, like I did with the um, right. projector shadow thing, as far as I can get, and then just present that as well yeah so if you could do a write-up similar to this one for the projector shadow thing that would be awesome because that one i think is uh much easier to evaluate frankly M much more of interest right now well no i, I uh, it would pre it would be premature of me to to say that but i it's <laughs> at first blush it seems to me like that's a much easier decision one way or the other um, it has has much less potential for because you've thought through the backwards compatibility issues and, and dealt with them quite well. Um, it has much 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 less potential for breaking backwards compatibility, you know, breaking existing content. And that's a as you, as everybody knows, that's a big deal. Um, so um, if you could, you you've given me one on one a lot of good material on that but if you could do a, a write-up like the one you did for for this uh this environment map issue um i think we you could make progress the projector on that. thing yeah yeah. The, yeah the environment thing is already there yeah no i mean do one like the environment shadow thing for the projector thing uh, and that that'd be good and we can and we can uh, get busy with evaluating that okay okay um Let's see, other stuff? Okay, so I want to talk about uh, a little bit about the 64-bit project and how it's going. Mostly it's going well. Um, so uh, but I know we haven't done an update in a little bit, uh, and that's because there are a few... Um, when can we get server supported group chat opt out? As I'm not sure I understand. I'm not sure I understand the question. Very simple as you right click on a group chat session and select opt out and then no more messages will appear. So you can opt in into the channel into the session again whenever you want, basically stopping any updates on the group chat. Similar to uh, closing the. You mean, oh, you, you mean preemptively doing it so that you you won't get them even from the beginning. Um, that would that would be okay. A additional feature, maybe? right? Because on on our viewer, if if you're getting group chat messages for a group you don't care about, and you close the chat window for that group, you don't yeah, get any more. The same, just that, right. that you don't have to close it or reopen it again afterwards. Right, I see what you're saying. So, we've talked about this multiple times, and we kind of share the desire to do something about it. <coughs> <coughs> but as following any of the feature requests on the subject will demonstrate, there doesn't seem to be one right way that everyone can agree on. Uh, there are multitude suggestions and not really... Um, any one that seems to be a clear winner um, from our point of view. So it's not dead, um, but I don't have a an up or down vote on it or, or a decision that we will definitely pursue it. Well, I would say do it like Firestorm did, although I really hate saying that, but just add a checkbox to the group and oh, well. additionally, 
Additionally, yeah, we add an option to the right click menu to opt out of the group chat at any moment you want and then opt in later if you want. Right. Well, if we did it, we I would want to do it um, not by just discarding the messages that get sent to you, get sent to your viewer, but by actually going back to the server and giving it some instruction not to send them in the first place. Um, which, because... Uh, well, you could have, is that all what it does? Well, Firestorm, you know, somebody could pick us up a contribution and it makes that decision a whole lot easier. Um, you, you know, Oz, you can, you can always pull it from the source. I mean, it's no, there. I can't. It's already implemented it in our view. No, I can't. You know better. I can't. Um, I need That's the original awesome. author to contribute it, and there's red tape. Because um, we're because we're a corporation. So the snooze was actually Kitty code, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Well then, Kitty, everybody's <laughs> looking at you. Um. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I I think. Um, we could handle it in a way that you can, as users, select what you actually want. Do you want to opt out completely or just halt the session until you resume it later on, in which case it will act like the busy mode and then delivering all the messages after you opt in again? Okay. Um, everyone uh, should should hark back to what Grumpity said. We're not sure what form we, uh, you know, whether we want to do that because it's not clear that it's the right thing for everybody. Grumpity ultimately gets to make most of that call, um, and there isn't anybody who gets it to make any more of it. Um, and we haven't made that call yet. So if we decide that we want it in something like the way. <laughs> Um, black, black. It, it's been done in Firestorm. Uh, we are sure that a polite request to Kitty will get us a nicely, a nicely bundled contribution, and then we'll integrate it. But for the time being, the decision hasn't been made, and this really isn't the place for trying to make it. <laughs> but, but thanks for bringing it back to our attention. It was so much more. It was so much fun the first. Nine times we thought of it. <laughs> okay, so now can I talk about the 64 bit viewer? Or is there anything else we gotta kind of talk about? Hearing nothing. Okay. Oh, quick. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, we, we have many things working. We're really happy with how well many things are working. Although we'd be delighted if more more people were testing it, because the number of people who've been running it is still, by viewer standards, ridiculously small. Um, there are a few there are a few functional changes that still need to be made uh, that will all of which are blocking release candidate status. The first one is well in in no particular order. Uh, um, first bullet is. Uh, Havoc for the Mac. Uh, the, the Mac version we have distributed right now doesn't have Havoc. Uh, and um, we've gotten the binary bits that we need from Havoc to do that. We have the sources, um, and we have yet to fold them into the main viewer. And the reason for that is that it turns out the only way they could give it to us was building it with Xcode 8, and so now we have to make the rest of the viewer build with Xcode 8. So we're working on that right now. Um, and that's a that's a good thing, but it turns out Xcode 8 is very picky about some um, things obnoxious, in the past. Uh, uh, some, some bad things we've done in the past and, and objects to them. And I, in fact, every one of them that I've looked at, uh, I have said, uh, yeah, this was this was really terrible. 
so uh, we're we're getting those we're getting those things fixed, and then we'll get X uh, Havocate incorporated. So the second, well, again, this is not an ordered list. Um, the next item on the list of um, things we need for release candidate status is that we're going to be updating the components uh, for CEF and uh, PLC. Um, they will then be up to the same, they will be feature parity and newer versions than they were um, with the Windows version. Um, we're actually, we have a, a new separate open source project called Doolahan uh, that one of our developers put together that's a um, simplified wrapper for incorporating CEF into something else for uh, the purpose of rendering web content. Uh, it's really... Will it um, finally fix 60 FPS? I, I don't have any idea. So, um, the, uh, so CEF is is coming, um, a, a newer version of CEF, and it will be, yeah, Doolahan. It's a, <laughs> um, look it up on the wiki. It's, it's on, on, on uh, Wikipedia. Names. It's kind of cool. Um, uh, okay, okay. So, so we're, 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 we're taking Doolahan and incorpor incorporating that. So that will replace LLC FLIB that it exists now. So, the um, uh, it's it's just a better encapsulation than we had before. Um, and okay, awesome. Um, yep. I have a request for you on the sixty-four bit build. Okay, let me get through my list, because and then we'll, we'll I get download. to that. Let me get to, let me get okay. through that list, my list, and then we'll get to that. Okay. Um, the third thing that we're going to do before we ship the 32 bit the 64 bit viewer into release candidate status is we're going to replace uh, the components that do the checks for viewer updates and do the downloads and installs um, part of the reason for that is that um, they're they needed improving anyway uh, but but one of the new things that they'll be doing is that they'll figure out if you download a viewer and it turns out you didn't really download the best one for you, it'll fix that for you. So if you have a 32-bit system and you downloaded the 64-bit viewer when you launch, it will figure out that uh, you there's a 32-bit component, wrapper component, that will figure out that, oh, you really, you really don't, this isn't going to work if I launch the viewer. Um, and it'll it'll redo the request for you and force you in, in, and update you into the 32-bit stream. So um, we're we're getting there. Uh, so those are the those are the three things that we know have to happen, plus any bug fixes. Uh, and we've gotten some good bug bug reports. Um, nothing all that tragic yet, but uh, yes, it will actually do that test whirly. Um, so it will it will detect that you're on a uh, an HD 2000 or 3000 system and put you into a build that will that will work. Um, so um, how Microsoft let that go out the way it does is just weird, but that's their their thing. We should finally uh, get rid of 32 bit once and for all. Seriously. Oh no, we can't. It's uh, eight point something percent of all the users. Um, no, I mean, I mean, on the OS side, uh, Microsoft well, should finally talk get to Microsoft, not me. Um, I'm not the person to talk to about what to do about Windows. <laughs> believe me. Um. So uh, now all of that, all of what I just said applies to the Windows build and to the Mac build, the ones we spend the vast majority of our time thinking about. Um, uh, okay, Cinder, I'm pretty sure Nat has seen those, but I will make sure. In fact, I will copy hunks of text and paste it over. Oh, Nat's here today. I was going to say Nat is Did right you hear Nat? Yes, Nat is here. 
And that is the one doing the uh, doing the Xcode 8, um, leading the charge on Xcode 8 at the moment. Um, so um, make sure you double check the patches from Cinder. Um, So the uh, none of that <laughs> um, none of that uh, applies to Linux yet because we really haven't done much on Linux yet. Uh, we started building a few of the libraries and so forth. As you know, we've we've not we've we've we're trying to make the community do most of the work for Linux. However, we recognize that the way the Linux viewer is distributed right now, that's not um, really easy to do. And what we're going to try and do is make that uh, easier. And here's the broad outline of the plan I want to attempt. May or may not work. We may have to completely abandon it and go back to what we were doing. But this is what we're going to attempt. What we're going to attempt is we're going to change the distribution form from a tarball full of stuff that you drop anywhere you feel like and execute the right piece out of into distributing a .deb. Right. So you will you will install it using standard Debian, um, you know, uh, apt-get SL viewer or whatever tag we decide on for it. Um, although you'll have to point it at the right repository or at the .deb file. <laughs> um, and w therefore, we're going to build it in the style that a proper Debian developer would build, which is to say, um, by changing the, the use system libs flag in our current CMake configuration from uh, from false to true, um, which is what used to be called doing a standalone build in a completely weird inversion of the normal meaning of the English word. Um, so it will it will expect you to have all the prerequisites installed. And of course, because it's a dev in, it will have all of those enumerated in, and the tools will be able to get them for you. So that's the plan. Uh, and the way we're going to get to that plan is that it will um, uh, we will have to use some version of stock boost. Yes, or well, actually, maybe not. Um, we'll have to we'll have to work through. I don't want to. I don't want to try to get into all any of the myriad individual issues that that will be required um, to make that work. What we're going to do is flip some bits in our build system and change our scripts around to the point that what they're attempting to do is build that Debian. Uh, we will set up a build server that uh, has all the prerequisites needed that we know about, um, and we'll let it run as far as we can. And then what we're going to do is discuss with the community on the open source dev list, here's a problem that the, the, the Linux Debian build is running into. Can you help us find a solution? Um, all of you should, by looking at the, at the, we'll publish what the repository for this work is, um, and all of you should be able to see what we're building and what problem we're hitting. And if there are Linux developers out there who want to end, want this to end up working someday, um, they will help find a solution for that, give us back a contribution for fixing it, and we'll incorporate it. And um, then we'll you know, sort of try again, and we'll iterate on that until it works. Um, and, and then we'll have a better, I think, a far better situation than we've ever had in terms of how to distribute the Linux viewer. Um, so, yeah, well, we'll, like I said, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with the, uh, the specifics of the of what it will what it will take to get that to work. Um, but that's the broad outline of the plan. Um, if if we're successful, 
maintaining a Linux viewer will become a, a much, much easier job and will because we won't have to be building all of those prerequisites. Um, if it turns out there are some that we need to build, uh, we'll, we'll do that and we'll just incorporate them into the dev. Uh, but uh, right now, building, that's one we'll have to incorporate into the, the dev. Uh, so we'll have to, you know, we'll have to build a few things and, and statically link them, um, but hopefully not many. Um, because right now it's 50 something. Um, and that's actually by far the bulk of the work for um, doing, doing significant upgrades. Um, and uh, we just can't afford to be doing that forever. So, so that's the plan. And that's the, see how it works out. I had hoped um, when I first talking, talked about doing this announcement this week uh, that we would actually have that repository in place and so on, but then the whole Xcode 8 thing came up and a couple other things that nobody needs to know about. Uh, and, we, and, and we didn't end up getting quite to the point where we were ready to do that. But most of those other problems have been solved and we'll get back to this. We would like to be able to have a, a, a Linux viewer that we're actively building on behalf of the community. Yes, circular dependencies are turning out to be an obnoxious problem in Xcode. Okay, yes, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, so I downloaded the viewer that Grumpy posted last week. Loved it. Beautiful. Right. It's a beautiful viewer. I <laughs> have one annoying problem with it, though. And can you Which fix this, please? Because every time, every time I load the viewer, I get a console popping up. I've turned the yeah, console we've already, off. we've already fixed logged that. Logged out, logged back up, and it pops back up. Okay, yep. it is fixed. That's fixed. It'll be it fixed. Fixed. It'll be fixed. It'll be it'll be fixed in the next version. Yes. That was a that was an accident, um, and uh, okay. So should not have gotten out. So the door, far, that's the did. only big problem I'm seeing. That's the but, only big problem I'm seeing with that other. So far, I like it. It seems to run way, smoother, and it's way, easier for me to fun. use. That is actually a feature you can enable in um, develop menu. I think either develop or advanced. Um, it's something called um, open console next time you start the view or something like that. Uh, if you don't know where to find it, it's really annoying. And uh, I don't think there is a debug for it. I don't know. It's it's. I had that long, long ago before I knew I, that it actually... I did. think in particular, this the particular uh, instance of this bug was constant, not yeah. that flag going wrong it was it was something else in the way we built it uh, mm. um, but it's it's it it is corrected now so we won't see that one again um, we internally we have a build that that doesn't do that anymore but um, it didn't seem like it was worth pushing an update to people just just for that one fix. And right now, literally, that's the only fix that the, yeah, that the in internal develop. repo has. It's in the develop menu. Huh. Yeah, and of course, it's a debug setting because it has to save it somewhere. But yeah, I didn't know the debug setting. Right. So just in case anyone here ever gets the problem of a console opening in the background, now you know how to fix it. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, any other 64-bit issues, questions, concerns? No, I won't predict dates. Okay. Um, one other sort of company-wide thing that isn't really third-party viewer related, but is is related to lots of features of Second Life. Um, 
as you all know, there are many ways in which uh, there are many things we do where we send email to you. Um, I am to email, but you can get other things from email. Um, and as I'm sure many of you are thinking of reminding me, yeah, but it doesn't really work. Um, and that's and that's true, and we know it. Um, and the reason it doesn't really work is that the primary reason that it doesn't work well and reliably, even as reliably as email ever is, is that the uh, a great many people, when they sign up for an account, give us a bogus email address. And we end up trying to send to that bogus email address, and it fails. And so ISPs see that we are a gigantic source of bogus email. Um, uh, how, I am glad to hear, Annie, that your email is not bogus. However, that may not be something that we know for sure. Um, we now have, for, for some months now, if you changed your, your email address, it would send you a verification message that you know it's kind of the standard thing right you it gets a message with a with a link in it you have to click on the link to verify that you got the email and your email then gets marked as a verified email um, if you go to the page where you can set your email on your on your system dashboard there account dashboard um, it now displays whether or not your email is verified um, and if it is not verified, it gives you a button to push to verify the existing email. Um, you should do that. Uh, you should tell your users to do that. Um, hardly anyone's email is verified today. Um, well, you can you can check. Just go look at the page where your email is is. Can get it right now. Uh, is set and it'll it'll either have a little green check mark next to it or it won't. Um, the uh, or maybe I'm thinking of an email verification on somebody else's site, but it'll it'll show you. Um, we are going to begin more or less immediately. In fact, we've already started uh, making changes to the way we do all the things that send email, and over time. In the not distant future, we will stop even trying to send to unverified email addresses. So, if it's been work, if email has, you've been getting email just fine, but your address isn't verified, then it's going to break. And so, go have a look at that thing. And we're going to try to advertise this very heavily. This is the very first instance of trying to advertise it happily um, because you, we know you guys have excellent connections to a great many users. Um, so um, do that. We want to try and get the proportion of verified email addresses up. Um, and then we'll stop so much sending so much bad email and we'll have some hope of getting our email to be more reliable. Yeah. I'll make a loading screen go. tip about it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, we'll do something do about it. Too. Yeah, we'll be doing something about it, Annie. Uh, probably both message of the day and uh, and a blog post. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. Excellent. We're not. We're not going to offer Lindens. Oh, come on, ten Lind. We, we should really add those um, those votings where when you vote for something like, let's say, you get get to choose between three new implementations or features, and if people vote, they get like, I don't know, 10 Lindens or something. Uh, every time we try <laughs> offering Lindens for something, people create thousands of accounts to get Lindens. Well, then, uh, then so we don't, have to no, we just sure don't do that. Uh, we, we just don't do that anymore. <laughs> it's pointless. It's amazing. It's amazing how small a payment people will go through you know, um, many. Yeah, but if you if you do a million times, oops. yeah. Well, it's there. I mean, there it's a you million go. times ten Lind dollars. It's ten million Lind dollars. Just think about it. How much money that is. Yeah, 
I knew, I, I know. Um, so, uh, no, I'm afraid this one is not going to be the carrot. It's going to be a stick. Uh, all the things that send you email will stop working. <laughs> <laughs> But but the idea about voting yes, is not all that yes. bad. I mean, that that would be a great way to bring um, some specific things to the attention to you of users. Like if you're uh, not sure if you want to do it like this or that, and want the oh no voting decide, just voting I know I'm, voting has nothing to do with it. It never works. Um, uh, you end up with somebody deciding to game the voting mechanism. Uh, yeah, then the entire year of voting system is useless. Yeah, I think it is, actually. Uh, at least in a public anyway. public facing context, I think it is. Uh, I mean, if you, if you had a, but that's a different, all right, all right. Different discussion. Okay. Um, Oh, okay. there's Other a question things? from Worley to you that is related to this discussion. I, the answers. It, yes, I'll pass me. Uh, problem with the links in the offline email. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. I, I am working on that myself, actually. Um, and I need to merge it with something else to get it tested. Bring back the volumetric clouds. Us do it. Bring nope. back those ugly Not clouds. happening. <laughs> no, seriously, they, <laughs> they were really ugly. <laughs> and really expensive. Um, yeah. Oh, in case anybody needed any uh, incentive, the 64 bit viewers also reported to be faster. Uh, come on, you know, at least for some users. I thought yeah. I didn't say it was nice. I did say it was nice. Remember that. I did say yeah, it was nice. Yeah, you did. We had the same experience when we went to 64-bit, and it, it, the performance was better, and it was just so much more reliable, right? The, the, uh, the, the, the stats we have on crash rate are based on such tiny numbers that they're basically meaningless right now. They're good, but they're, they're meaningless. But the, uh, Well, that's the why they're meaningless, because are... Whirly's dropping up the crash rate. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but the really? the uh, but the but the performance numbers that individuals are getting are still kind of heartening, um, and and they're they're really good. So. Yeah, but those performance numbers are really useless <laughs> because every, every single option in the options menu, every single object in the world that is being rendered, literally everything at any second can change your entire performance. Oh, sure. So, right. Yeah. So but what really people are reporting is that you know they they they're used to one of our one of our people who does this, spends a lot of time non Linden time in in world uh, told me that she's been perfectly happy you know rumbling along in the in the twenty to thirty frames per second and logged in on the Mac viewer oh, Mac sixty four bit oh, viewer and got double that oh, uh, you know on her own reading. Those look on those performance numbers. Yeah, but she hadn't changed options and she hadn't changed where she was. So, you know, it's it's something. And uh, if I notice just a single frame missing from my frame rate, I'm sure I will tell you, Oz. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Um, I think we're running out of time. So is there any other urgent issues? Yes. Why can't I edit the uh, Wikipedia, the um, the group attendance thing? Uh, we closed editing on the wiki after a whole series of really severe yeah, I spam. Saw it, but, <laughs> but still, how am I supposed um, to add? How am you I ask to add? nicely. Yeah. Oh, okay. With Send a nice or through support, and then some anonymous nice Linden will take care of it. Ah, okay. There, uh, there is a whitelist. Uh, um, and the the other thing is, um, unfortunately, this is one of those you know somebody did something bad, and that's why we can't have nice things. 
<laughs> it's always like that. Um, the other thing is um, maintenance issues, I think, or bug issues. Generally, some very specific issues that are often popping up in the source code that I can't have a look into. Why is that? I'm a, I'm a th third party viewer developer and I can't look up the bugs that are that I'm yeah. managing all the time. Right. I, Do you have to send a nice email for that too? Um, there, there, are, <laughs> there you, you can send a nice email for that. Um, you still won't have as much access as you want. But um, uh, but send me that email and uh, I will, but you'll have more than you have now. How's that? Mm, okay, as long as I it's, can. Uh... It, that's, that's, a, that's a long subject uh, that I really can't, you know, why uh, that is, is a long subject I, I really can't get into. And well, all I, want uh, is I would love to change a bunch of that someday, but it's, I have... I have more well, important all, things to all do. All I want is the ability to look into those issues I'm merging. Not all of them, obviously, but some just, well, the description right. isn't always as describing as it should be. And then I obviously want to look into it, why and what right. this drop, feature drop is. Me an email, drop me an email so that I have a record of you asking, and then I will add you to the group I can add, that I can add you okay. to, and we'll see if that helps. Okay, sounds good. All right. Yeah. Uh, you back. <laughs> no, Willie, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yes, this would be a good time to point out, because I like to do it at every opportunity, that we are actively attempting to hire another... Uh, Server side Second Life developer and another Second Life web developer. So if you know anybody, tell them. Maybe we should offer a Linden dollar bonus for that, Grumby. Oh, sounds interesting. I I'm, <laughs> I might actually I might actually do that. I gotta go ask somebody if I can do that. Yeah, for referrals. <laughs> Nice. You get real money for working for you. Yeah, we, we actually do pay in, in U.S. dollars, uh, not Lindens. I, I, I'm afraid it would be illegal for us to pay in Lindens, but we should totally consider it. <laughs> yeah, it, it has, that no, would no, undermine. No. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think, but, but maybe we could pay a finder's fee in Lindens. I don't know. I'll talk to. Well, I can offer myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> just, to, um, just imagine that us. Well, uh, Linden, lindenlab.com slash careers. Um, okay. I, I need to go. I have to go uh, do the next thing. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you very much for being here and uh, to all the Lindens that are here. Uh, thanks for listening to us, Haz. It was great. <laughs> bye. Thank you, bye. Take care, Bear. Take care, Grumpy. You too. Have a good day. Now, I have a toy to go unbox, install on my computer, and play with. I got a new art tablet for my computer. Welcome. I can thank Apple for that one. <laughs> okay, time to get working on the environment thing. Or oh, I'll play some games.